Hello. Come on in. Yes, uh, you're the two o'clock appointment, right? Okay. I think I have you written down somewhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, so on the phone you said that you wanted a bit of a consultation. Mm-hmm. So, you've bought a house. Congratulations. And you want a little bit of help on decorating and interior design. Perfect. Well, I can certainly help you in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, which rooms was it that you were looking to do with me? We can do the entire house, of course, or just selected rooms. some ideas for the lounge. Okay. Alright. Well, um, I'm going to show you some different brochures, different fabrics, uh, types of veneer we also do because you're looking to do your kitchen worktops and things. Yes, and you can decide what you think looks best. First of all, I just want to kind of get an idea of your aesthetically uh, preferred types of things. So, this book has um, a few different looks and styles. So, for example, if you wanted to go with a more pastel look with very muted colours. It's very popular for bedrooms at the moment. And again, you could do the same kind of thing with the kitchen. Okay, so you wanted something a bit bolder for the kitchen. Here we have quite a few neutral colours. Mm -hmm. So we've got the browns, and then they introduce the kind of bamboo and wicker style furniture. And then, of course, we've got house plants. They don't have to be real house plants if you don't want to commit to looking after those. This bedroom is. and charcoals. Also very popular to have like a bright splash of colour amongst those type of things. Mm -hmm. So throw cushions maybe, um, some accessories in a brighter colour. Or if you're feeling extremely brave, you can go for the bright colours all over said you wanted to be a little more daring with the kitchen. The yellows and greens are very popular for the kitchens, so maybe think about that. So there's a range of colours, I'll move on to those a little bit later. your eye for either the kitchen, the master bedroom, or the lounge. Okay. So, I'll just jot those down. Greens for the kitchen. <laughs> Possibly blues and greys for 
lounge, right? You're not quite sure about the master bedroom yet. That's fine. You can take a look and hopefully something will inspire you. I'll show you some of the paints that we have. So as you can see, there's a very wide range of different colours. Yes, so these are the kind of paler pastels along with these. We've got neutrals over here. Mm -hmm. So you were thinking greens for the kitchen. These are some of the greens we do. The um, overtly olive, as it's called, is one of our best sellers because it's green, but it's not too in your face. Mm -hmm. Blues and greys for the living room. Um, We've got Slate, Goose Down is also very popular, uh, Polished Pebble, depends if you wanted to go for the darker greys or the paler ones, Goose Down, yeah, and there's also Frosted Street down the bottom there which is a pale grey, Misty Mirror, that's an in-between one, so if you wanted to compromise, I would say that was very good. And paired with navies and darker blues could look very sophisticated. <laughs> as far as bedroom colours, if you're not sure, I would always say go with more neutral. So, these guys brown and yellow tones and also any of these are always lovely because you can always do a feature wall if you wanted that was a little bit brighter okay so that's those colours for the living room. Mm -hmm. Are there any that particularly catch your eye? Bronx mm -hmm. and Long Island. Okay. Here we've got a very brave kitchen that's very dark. You have to have a very big kitchen.
don't have to go extremely light in the bedroom um, because we spend most of our time there at night obviously you can go for darker shades such as Santa Cruz or Santa Monica they're still the brown kind of neutrals but they're a bit darker they have a bit more showmanship yes okay So we'll start off with your kitchen because you know the kind of colours that you wanted in there. So I've got some images in this book here of different kitchens. Now you don't just have to look at the colour scheme, you can also look at the tiles, the layout, different things that you prefer. So we have a few different ones. Are you wanting an island? Is it big enough for an island? Okay, if possible. We'll come out and measure, obviously, and we'll take a look at the space. And if we think it doesn't look right or it does, we'll let you know. Uh, are you wanting built-in fridges? Mm -hmm. Okay. And is it a kitchen diner or just a kitchen? Okay, I'll write that down. So the diner is separate. Now, the type of cupboards you choose is totally up to you. We have these ones that are practically seamless, where they don't have handles, they're a push-open. Same with the drawers. And all our drawers come with a cushion closing, so there's no slamming of anything. Have you thought about maybe a breakfast bar? Is that something you'd be interested in? And are there any specific needs? Do you need extra little counters or extra space for a wheelchair or anything? Here we have very dark counters with the red background. I would say you need And then here we have the total contrast, which is the lighter one. And it's got the kind of cottage feel of the wooden tops and white cupboards. If you did choose a dark green, because you wanted to go with green for the walls, right? You could pick a light cupboard like this to contrast and keep the space feeling. Personally, I think if you're doing green, I would go with um, a traditional wooden look for the tops to keep it all tied in with the kind of rustic, natural feel. Mm -hmm. These cupboards, for example, they're all brown, <laughs> so it's like almost natural wood some different veneers to show you so you can actually choose which one you think looks best. We want a um, built-in microwave and uh, ovens as well as your fridge or Simply because it has 
neutral and colored color and then the natural brown tops that you can see these are actually um, solid oak tops yes you give me your budget at the beginning so <laughs> don't worry about that or again even the all over. It would also fit really well. Yes, it would keep the aesthetic of the room as well. Yes, you do have uh, up to three weeks if you change your mind. If you decide on a different colour scheme or maybe different countertop. I'm going to leave lighting until a little bit later and I'm going to show you some of the different veneers we have for countertops okay. These are all veneers that can be put onto the solid countertops. Mm -hmm. And I want you to keep in mind that these can also um, be the colours of different floors you could get if you wanted a wooden floor or a wooden effect floor. Okay, so let's start with this very light coloured one. Yeah. If you're going for a really dark green, I would recommend a lighter one. But if you're going for a pale and more pastel green, I don't think the light one is going to stand out enough to be a high contrast. Next we have This one isn't natural, but if you did want to continue the dark look, you could get a stain like this one. If your kitchen is big enough, you can have quite an impact when you have dark cupboards or dark countertops. Even this as a floor would look really nice if you have a big enough space. into um, the more natural looks. This one I like to call almost mahogany because it's not quite as dark but um, it's very pretty with kind of red shades. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted a warmer feel this one would be perfect.
this one isn't as warm, but it's still very pretty. This is our almost oak colour. Um, I think this one would probably be my favourite to recommend to you if you were choosing those olive tones for the walls. For either countertops or cupboards, it's totally up to you. Again, a warm tone. This one is more of orange tones, which again would look nice with green. Uh, these ones are also slightly more expensive because they're thicker and just a little bit more sturdy, so they do come. this one as well, not only because of the colour, but because of the gorgeous grain on this one. Yeah, you can see that the grain is quite a bit darker than the rest of it, so it really contrasts well. And when everything is covered on the top with this, it makes really pretty, interesting patterns. And finally, we have this very dark stain. Again, it's up to you if you think this would fit. I would recommend going with one of the lighter greens for the walls if you were going to use this. So one of the more pastel colours. Yeah. another look if you can't decide. We can let you take a look whenever you want. Perfect. Let me just pop these aside because I'm in that room. So I'll just note that down. Everything we've looked at there. Okay. Shall we move to the lounge now. Mm -hmm. I've picked out um, some different wallpapers that I think would go great with your colour scheme. For the main walls, three of the walls, I was thinking to go with the more muted grey, but I didn't want just a plain grey, I wanted something with a bit of texture, so I've chosen this really pretty textured grey paper, and it almost looks like And then as the feature wall, I was thinking either this pale pastel pink, it's just a very 
very muted pink So it's not all just grey and so Oh, because you said you were quite fond of blues This is just a snippet of the paper But it is white, grey and navy in large triangles And then it has these rose gold strips That just marry the whole thing together Curtains and upholstery in the living room. I've brought a whole different range of coloured material for you to look at. This won't be the fabric, but it will be the colour if you decide to go with it. did go with the pink wall, you could also go with the pink curtains. Yes, so this pink is a little bit darker than the wallpaper shade, but I believe that they do complement one another. There's a few different pinks, so let me show you. This one, which is a little bit of a more purpley shade, so I don't think I would recommend that one. If you were very brave, you could go for this bright fuchsia. These two are very similar, but these two would probably be the best kind of shades to go with the wallpaper that I showed you. Yes, I'll keep those two aside for now. going for the other wallpaper that had the navies in and you wanted to pick out navies and different blue shades I do have some really pretty blues so I've got these two this one is a darker more purpley blue and then this one is the lighter more Something maybe a bit darker. Alright, let's see if I can find one. Alright, there's one. Again, a more purpley shade. Okay, you quite like that one. Let's put that one aside. Put that on the other side. This one I actually think would be perfect. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the grey wallpaper next to it, they just complement each other so well, don't you think? I think so too. So I'll put that one 
side as well while I've got my fabric samples out um, I wanted to show you some ideas for your bedroom so you said you wanted more neutral colours so I've gone with either this one which is different shades of browns and greys yes it's textured so when it's on the wall it kind of looks like a bamboo forest or possibly a tatami mat you like that one? okay perfect so as far as colours for fabrics and upholstery in your bedroom because you've chosen such a neutral wallpaper, you can go a little bit wild. <laughs> so I would recommend either picking out different browns, like these for example, but I wouldn't pick just one, I would mix them. So as you can see, they go very well together. And then along with the wallpaper, it would just look really good. Um, I have a few of the browns and neutrals, if you see. So they're not true brown. They're more flesh tones. Again, they would go well with the wallpaper. Not as keen on the bright ones, okay, that's fine. What you can also do, because you've got the brown wallpaper, is go a little bit wild with some warmer tones. Like this one, it's a darker salmon tone. But you can be very wild because you've chosen this wallpaper. <laughs> Alright, put it just down as a maybe. oranges and yellow tones, very warm colours that would also go really nice. I think this mustard yellow is especially pretty with brown. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even have to be big things. It could be things like scatter cushions or a pillowcase, just something little. Maybe a throw on top of a chair just to pick out some extra colours. These two as well. Some more orange fiery tones. Yes. Again with the wallpaper. What do you think? Brilliant. Well, I'll make a um, a mood board for you with everything on just so you can have a look and see which you'd prefer right, put my samples to the side um, what else do I have under here? Oh, I have a curtain fabric so as far as curtains go do you need anything specific? Do you want blackout or sound reducing or blackout for the bedroom? Something a bit lighter for the living room, okay. Uh, well, inside our blackout curtains, we have this lining, which is very thick. It can come in any colour you like. It's not going to be bright turquoise or purple every time.
and for the lounge these are our lighter materials we have this very very light cotton material so this one will be extremely thin if you want in a really light curtain that lets in more light and because it's such a thin material you can also bunch it up so, so I would recommend getting curtains that are at least twice the width that they need to be. Yes, so you can really bunch them up together. Or if you're not looking to have something so thin, we do a slightly thicker material. Again, not just in This one is a little bit more sturdy to block light, but again, it's quite lightweight, so you can bunch it or you can just have it as um, normal curtains if that's what you prefer. Okay, let's see now. Uh, we'll now look at some lighting options. <laughs> now people tend to overlook lights and lampshades um, because it's just something you automatically assume is there. But the right light or lampshade can change a room dramatically depending on where you place it, depending on the finish shapes you get, even depending on the colour and intensity of the bulb. So here we have some spherical shades. We have standing lamps, ceiling lights and wall lights. Even desk lights and ones that stand on the floor. Your living room has two ceiling lights, right? Mm -hmm. Well then I would probably suggest that you get a floor lamp as well Just so you don't always have to have the big bright lights on on a night Gives it more of a cosy feel As for the bedroom What we find is very popular at the moment are string lights Not just for teenagers bedrooms anymore do all sorts, like these rope lights, ones that look like old-fashioned bulbs, all sorts of different ones. You can get them in the plain white on a colours, and you can have those around the ceiling, maybe draped off some shelves, perhaps around the um, headboard of the bed. For your bedroom, I really like these basket type shades that will fit in with the browns and neutral colours. Maybe even some bamboo in there, nice textures. And then for your kitchen, it's ceiling lights as well, right? Okay. So I would say. I would say something like these ones. They're not the brightest, but if you get the right bulb, they can really light up the room. And I would also recommend some wall lights. And you can see you can get them in the colour of the wall. Yes, yeah, so you could get them in the, the green shade.
right. <laughs> yes, we're on to the final part now, which is um, dressing a room. Mm -hmm. So I want to start off with pictures. So for your bedroom, if you do go for the more pink accessories and upholstery, I would suggest um, some little canvases that actually have pink running through them, just like this one. Um, so we can see here, or if you choose the pink for the living room as well, you can see how these canvases small. Uh, this is the medium, the small one's very small. Then we go to large and extra large, depending on where you want to put them. If you're going for somewhere like above the fireplace, I would say get an extra large. Mm -hmm. You could even have a few of these on the walls in the kitchen. I would go with the blue and green and tones. Yes. So this one. No interpretation really. I think if you were going for the kitchen, you could probably get this size. And if you had a few different green ones, you could put them at angles to one another some kind of interesting placement on the wall. Yes, just because it's the kitchen doesn't mean it all has to be about functionality. Also for the kitchen, because you're going with the natural kind of aesthetic, I suggest some um, potted plants. These ones are artificial, so you don't even have to have ones that you need to look after. Uh, cacti and succulents are very popular at the moment. So these two are just two different types. This one comes in the, the clean white square pot. And this one comes in the more natural kind of earthy looking pot along with the white pebbles in it as well yes I think that they're a really good choice to put on little shelves and have like little knickknacks but they're no extra hassle because they're artificial you could of course get real ones and certain succulents like that actually don't need a lot of looking after, so they're a great idea. Alright, well, I think I've gone through everything that I need to today. I want you to go home and have a think about the countertops, the upholstery, what kind of colour schemes you want to go for. Mm-hmm.